The story begins with a massive earthquake that shakes the entire world, causing dungeons to appear all over the country. The monsters emerging from these dungeons are unaffected by normal weapons. Only those who have acquired supernatural powers known as skills can fight these monsters. By using their skills to defeat monsters, the users can level up and strengthen themselves to reach unexpected heights. These powerful individuals, who inspire both fear and respect, are known as Awakened Ones. At this moment, a young boy is seen preparing to fight a goblin. This boy is the main character of our story, Kisaragi Tsukasa. He is at a certain level and possesses a skill called Imitation. Suddenly, Kisaragi strikes with his sword and fortunately manages to hit the goblin. However, the cut is too shallow and his ability to mimic the goblin's skill fails. Kisaragi feels a bit disappointed. Unexpectedly, the goblin jumps up and closes in to attack him, but suddenly a powerful human appears and instantly kills the monster by burning it with a fireball. You shouldn't have to fight just to deal with trash like that, idiot, says Tadu Kakaru, who is at a certain level and possesses a skill called Fire Master. According to Kisaragi, Tadu Kakaru is considered a bright star of the next generation of Awakened Ones. This is because his skill began to manifest among a limited number of humans when the dungeons started appearing. The skill can determine the rank and superiority of an Awakened One. At that moment, Tadu Kakaru tells Kisaragi to stop sitting there with a dumb look on his face and start gathering magic stones. He also tells him to at least try to be useful. Quickly, Kisaragi responds that he understands. However, Fire Master is considered a very powerful skill that allows Tadu Kakaru to manipulate fire at will. Meanwhile, Kisaragi's skill, called Imitation, allows him to mimic the skills of monsters, but its success rate is very low, forcing him to put himself in danger by getting close to the monsters. Moreover, it is an imperfect skill. On the other hand, Yashimura Riku, who is at a certain level and possesses a skill called Herculean Strength, asks Kisaragi how long he will keep clearing dungeons, facing new opponents who are at a certain level with the skill Thunderbolt. Kisaragi can't even fight, and his skill is completely useless. He asks why Kisaragi doesn't just give up. However, Tadu Kakaru tells his friends not to act like that. Then he asks if they are not all friends. Tadu Kakaru then tells Kisaragi to try to make the best use of his skill even though it is considered useless. Kisaragi remains silent at that moment. Additionally, Kisaragi became an adventurer to take care of his younger sister, Kisaragi Mayu. She is his only family and has suffered from an illness since birth. However, an elixir is a medicine capable of curing any disease. According to Kisaragi, until he can use the elixir, he cannot quit his job. A short while later, Yashimura Riku asked what their objective was for the day. Hayato, who was new, also asked if they would go straight to their boss's room. Tadu Kakaru stated that their target was the monster's base and, besides that, they would loot all the treasure for themselves. Without waiting any longer, Tadu Kakaru used his powerful fire against the goblins, causing him to level up. According to him, even though they were just goblins, he could level up by killing enough of them. However, Kisaragi was surprised to learn that the only way to level up was by killing monsters, as he had barely managed to defeat one. Additionally, although Kisaragi joined the group, Tadu Kakaru and the others would kill everything, so he wouldn't gain any experience. He thought that if this was going to be the case, there was no point in coming with them. A few minutes later, Tadu Kakaru and his team finally found the treasure, but instead of heading straight for the gold, Tadu Kakaru moved to the other side, and suddenly an explosion occurred in that area. I can't believe there's a bonus room here, said Tadu Kakaru excitedly. After all, bonus rooms are usually filled with valuable and powerful items, but on the other hand, there's a high chance they're filled with traps. If someone fell into a dangerous trap, they could be instantly killed. At this point, Yashimura asked Tadu Kakaru what they should do about the traps. Without hesitation, Tadu Kakaru replied that it wasn't a problem because he had a good idea. Without shouting, Tadu Kakaru suddenly hit Kisaragi. As a result, Kisaragi fell straight to the ground. After that, Tadu Kakaru choked Kisaragi and said, Forgive me, Kisaragi, but you will die for us. However, Kisaragi didn't understand what he was talking about. Instead, Yashimura asked Tadu Kakaru if he was going to use Kisaragi to trigger the traps. According to Hayato, using their classmate as bait like that was very cruel, but Tadu Kakaru replied that he was just finding a way to recycle useless trash. After that, the two of them grabbed Kisaragi, and then Tadu Kakaru sent him into a dark room. After that, Tadu Kakaru thanked Kisaragi for helping them and then said they would meet again if he managed to survive. Kisaragi was very angry at that moment. Suddenly, a blinding light shocked Kisaragi. Moments later, Kisaragi wondered where this place was, and as he wandered around, he suddenly saw fierce eyes. Without a doubt, a beast appeared suddenly. Meanwhile, every dungeon has its own rank, beginner, intermediate, advanced, heroic, and one last rank that no one has ever conquered, which is the mythic rank. 
Unfortunately for Kisaragi, he encountered Fenrir, the god-eater, one of the mythic beasts. Kisaragi couldn't believe his eyes, he even asked if this place was really a mythic-ranked dungeon. You mean a trap in a low-ranked dungeon brought me here? This isn't funny, said Kisaragi. However, Kisaragi declared that he refused because, according to him, one day his parents suddenly died and Mayu was the only family he had left. For Mayu's sake, Kisaragi refused to die in a place like this. In an instant, Kisaragi suddenly attacked the beast. However, he was nothing compared to the mythic beast, and as a result, Kisaragi was easily defeated by the monster. Kisaragi wondered if this was truly the end. He had lost all hope by this point, so he apologized to his sister, Mayu, for being such a disappointing brother. However, suddenly, Kisaragi heard a woman's voice commanding the beast to sit. He was utterly shocked and didn't understand how Fenrir could obey her commands. Good boy, Fenrir. You know, I would appreciate it if you were a bit gentler with him, said the beautiful woman. Furthermore, according to the woman, Kisaragi was an important guest. Then, the enchanting creature welcomed Kisaragi to her castle and expressed her delight in meeting him. Despite still being in shock, Kisaragi asked who she was. Nonetheless, the woman noted that Kisaragi was in better condition than she expected, but he still found it unbelievable. In his current state, Kisaragi had no idea what the woman was talking about. Unexpectedly, the beautiful woman whispered and mentioned that it was a gift she had given him. Additionally, she told Kisaragi to be grateful. Kisaragi was astounded at that moment. However, due to what the woman did to him, Kisaragi's imitation talent instantly transformed into Copycat. Suddenly, a system appeared, indicating that Kisaragi had received a substantial amount of mana particles, causing his level to increase instantly. Kisaragi leveled up immediately, but he couldn't believe it and remained confused about what was happening. I'm sorry, said the woman, but before she could leave, Kisaragi asked if she could explain. However, he didn't even have the chance to finish his question when the woman suddenly interrupted and commanded him to use his new power to defeat the beast. Furthermore, she mentioned that once Kisaragi did so, he could exit this mythical level dungeon with the star of the tour. After that, the woman suddenly disappeared like a cloud of smoke. However, according to Kisaragi, there was no way to win against this monster. Suddenly, the beast started attacking him. Fortunately, Kisaragi managed to block its attack this time, and because of that, his copycat ability was activated. In an instant, a system appeared, indicating that the target's ability was beginning to be copied. However, Kisaragi still didn't know how to fight this creature. Yet, he was suddenly startled after the system warned him that he had successfully copied the target's ability. The God Eater Fenrir ability was a divine authority that could coat the user's body with the power of the gods, enhancing their physical abilities to the maximum limit. According to Kisaragi, if he used this ability, he could win, but it would only last for one minute, so he had to choose the moment carefully. Without a shout, God Eater Fenrir suddenly attacked Kisaragi. Fortunately, Kisaragi managed to dodge its powerful strike. According to him, his body felt incredibly light, and he could react faster due to his increased level. However, Kisaragi was still astonished that he could copy Fenrir's ability. On the other hand, imitation abilities usually had a very slim chance of copying the target's ability, but this new copying ability was quite insane as it guaranteed the ability to copy them after touching them. It was extraordinary. Kisaragi didn't fully understand what it meant to experience it firsthand. Suddenly, Fenrir used his ability called Divine Wolf Power against Kisaragi, which severely limited Kisaragi's mobility. At that moment, Kisaragi wondered why he couldn't breathe. Surprisingly, a system suddenly appeared and showed that the Divine Wolf Power ability had been successfully copied. This person could now use the presence of a Silver Wolf to intimidate his enemies. In addition to its intimidating effects, the Silver Wolf could severely disrupt the target's movements, though its duration was only a few seconds and varied depending on the target's level. Kisaragi then realized that experimenting meant seriously acquiring the ability, but like Kisaragi, it almost made him cry without warning. Kisaragi fainted when the silver wolf attacked him again suddenly. Fortunately, Kisaragi wasn't injured. Meanwhile, he thought there was no chance he could survive this attack. Before he could talk about a knife, Fenrir attacked again. Luckily, Kisaragi managed to block Fenrir's attack this time, but he was quickly running out of energy. Although there was a 50% chance to copy the ability, he would die if he tried to withstand the attack. However, with the Divine Authority ability, Kisaragi might be able to fight. According to Kisaragi, it was a matter of life and death. In an instant, he suddenly activated the Divine Authority ability. As a result, a massive explosion occurred in the area. Moments later, the system appeared on the scene and showed that Kisaragi had successfully copied the target's ability called Vanargan. However, he only had a few seconds left for the Divine Authority ability's duration. 
Kisaragi didn't waste any time and immediately attacked Fenrir using the Van Argon ability. Fortunately, he hit Fenrir, but Fenrir was so strong that it wasn't enough. At the same time, Kisaragi only had a few seconds left for the Divine Authority ability's duration. Meanwhile, Kisaragi was awestruck by the overflowing power of the Divine Authority skill. He thought that with this, he could win, but he only had a few seconds before the effect ended, so he used that time to finish off Fenrir. He had to defeat him before time ran out. I will destroy him with Van Argon, Kisaragi shouted angrily. In an instant, he attacked again. The monster used the Van Argon ability, but unfortunately, he couldn't reach it at this distance because of the level difference. In this situation, Kisaragi decided to attack Fenrir directly, but surprisingly, Fenrir suddenly opened his mouth as if trying to counterattack. Kisaragi was shocked because his plan didn't work. Suddenly, a powerful flame burst from the beast's mouth, causing a new explosion in the area. Fortunately, Kisaragi managed to jump and avoid the powerful attack. However, Fenrir wasn't done yet. He prepared to launch a new attack on Kisaragi, but suddenly Kisaragi threw his sword at Fenrir and managed to hit him in the eye. Regardless, before time ran out, Kisaragi moved closer to end Fenrir's life, but unexpectedly, someone suddenly shouted and told Kisaragi to stop. Kisaragi stopped immediately. In an instant, the copycat ability was activated, and an ability called Wordplay was successfully copied. Good, that was an excellent performance, stated the beautiful woman. After that, she said the fight was over. Additionally, the woman believed that she was calling for a small, peaceful party. However, it wasn't the first time she had done this. Kisaragi asked her why she did that. The woman immediately responded, saying it was to pass the time. Apart from the woman, adventurers rarely came there, and even then, Fenrir quickly killed them. She didn't expect to meet someone like Kisaragi. After that, she asked Kisaragi if he would listen to her request. Kisaragi then asked what it was. According to the woman, she wanted to experience the outside world herself. Apart from her, the outside world only contained a few mana particles, so she couldn't explore it freely. That is why she wanted Kisaragi's cooperation. Kisaragi immediately agreed with the woman. She was very surprised at that moment because she did not expect such a quick answer. However, according to Kisaragi, there were many uncertainties and he couldn't trust her yet. But thanks to the woman, someone as weak as him could survive the subtle laughter. Additionally, Kisaragi felt that the idea and the woman would benefit him. You want to explore the outside world, but how? Kisaragi asked. He hadn't even finished his words when he suddenly fainted. According to the woman, it seemed Kisaragi had used too much energy, but she didn't blame him. However, Kisaragi was still conscious. He even managed to ask her name in a flash. The woman introduced herself as Loki. Furthermore, Loki stated that she was happy to be able to work with Kisaragi. A week later, Kisaragi woke up, but the ceiling he saw was unfamiliar to him. At that moment, Kisaragi suddenly saw Loki. He immediately asked who she was. Damn, have you already forgotten me? A very cold man, said Loki. Instantly, Kisaragi asked if she was Loki-san. However, Loki told him that he could drop the honorific and that Loki was enough. Meanwhile, Kisaragi thought he finally had the chance to have fun in the outside world. But Loki told him that he had been in that place all along. Besides Loki, Kisaragi had been very troubling. She then asked if he wanted to make amends, but Kisaragi told her to get rid of herself first and then they could talk. Meanwhile, Kisaragi asked what happened after he fainted. Loki immediately replied that she had carried his body and moved them to a beginner level dungeon. Anyway, Kisaragi asked again how she took him to the hospital. Hospital? Oh, so that's the name of this place, said Loki. According to her, she left his unconscious body in a place where a passing adventurer could find him. The person who found him then took him there, but Kisaragi asked why she had never come out until then if she could move herself. Loki then explained that it was because she was a god. To maintain her original form, she needed a large number of mana particles. Since the volume of mana in this world was very low, she could only appear in this imperfect form. After that, Loki asked if she was right in saying that she couldn't travel very freely. Instantly, Kisaragi replied that he didn't think so. Besides him, Loki would be taken to the police for protection. Surprisingly, Loki suddenly hit Kisaragi. On the other hand, Kisaragi asked why she helped him. Loki replied that it was because she wanted his cooperation. It would benefit him, but Loki did not finish her words and said that she would save the details for later. Kisaragi became confused about this. Suddenly, Loki approached to leave the place. Kisaragi asked where he was going. Immediately, he said that he wasn't so rude as to disturb the moment Kisaragi was spending with his family. Then he said goodbye without warning. Neu suddenly appeared at the scene and looked very worried about Kisaragi. She immediately approached him and hugged him. My dear brother, you have been in a coma for a whole week, said Mayu. Besides herself, even the doctors had said that Kisaragi might never wake up. Kisaragi was very shocked because he didn't know he had been asleep for so long. He then apologized to his sister for making her worry. However, Mayu was very happy he woke up. She thought that if Kisaragi left her, 
but she hadn't finished speaking when Kisaragi said it was okay. He also said that he wouldn't go anywhere. Additionally, according to Kisaragi, they were the only family for each other after everything. After that, Mayu told her brother that she had to go, then she asked him to keep resting. Kisaragi also told her not to push herself too hard. In an instant, Mayu said not to worry because, in her opinion, she had been feeling very well lately. Yet, she still remained uneasy, as Kisaragi had said. Suddenly, Loki reappeared and immediately asked Kisaragi if she was his sister. Kisaragi confirmed and added that Mayu was the only family he had left. Moreover, Kisaragi had been sick since birth, all the doctors said there was no cure for his condition. That's why he entered the dungeon searching for a medicine that could cure all diseases. However, Loki suddenly said he was sorry because he believed the disease his sister had couldn't be cured even with that medicine. Kisaragi was shocked by what he said. He then asked what he meant. According to Loki, the origin of Mayu's condition might be a curse from the dungeon, though the curse actually came from a skill, more precisely. However, Loki didn't know exactly who did it, but it was the work of another mythical ranked being like himself. Kisaragi then asked if it was true that if the curse came from a skill, then killing the god who cast it would break the curse. Suddenly, Loki said that was true. Kisaragi then said he would defeat the god who cursed his sister and cure her. After that, he asked Loki if he could help him. Loki immediately replied that he would help him in his quest because he was also curious about who had cursed his sister. Kisaragi thanked him. Meanwhile, Loki explained to Kisaragi that with this decision, he now had to face the dungeon every day for his training. Additionally, Kisaragi would also need more experience to face the mythical ranked dungeon. According to Kisaragi, he really wants to do it, but he still has to go to school. However, Loki doesn't know what school is. Kisaragi then explains that all the students at Tenjetsu Academy, the school he attends, are awakened. It is a special school for those who aspire to become adventurers. Anyway, now we will form a team, says Kisaragi. Then, Loki also says that he looks forward to working together. A few days later, on a day off at JDMO, a woman tells Kisaragi that she is worried she can't allow him to enter the dungeon alone. She also advises him to consider the level difference. Besides the woman, it is established that during solo adventures, it is unwise to face monsters that are higher level than oneself. He will be on par with monsters of the same level, and when fighting higher level monsters, the danger level increases significantly. Nevertheless, according to the woman, Kisaragi is currently at the same level as the monsters appearing in the goblin nest of the beginner level dungeon, all of which are at least at that level. She then says that she knows the difference is not significant, but rules are rules. As a result, Loki gets angry at the woman. He even asks Kisaragi if he should turn her into minced meat for him. However, Kisaragi simply says not to say such things. Additionally, he reminds Loki that they have decided not to reveal his true identity. The last time Kisaragi entered the dungeon, he was still at that level and his ability was limitation. JDMO still has that record to this day. He has leveled up since then and has a completely different ability. If they find out, it would be a big problem. Anyway, according to Loki, Kisaragi is very tolerant, and he asks him if he is just being lazy, but Kisaragi simply invites him to leave because he doesn't want to cause a commotion. But Loki tells him that it is still too early to turn back. He then asks him to try using wordplay because he thinks the result would be very interesting. Wordplay is a skill that Kisaragi copied from Loki, but he is forbidden from activating that skill. However, Kisaragi decides to try his luck. Excuse me, is it possible to enter the dungeon alone as Loki said? After that, he suddenly activates the skill called wordplay, and because of that, the woman immediately grants him permission. She then asks if she can see his ID card to process his request. A few moments later, Kisaragi asks Loki if he really thinks that Loki wouldn't know that he had used that skill. Loki tells him not to worry because, in his opinion, the activation of wordplay cannot be detected by anyone else besides him. After all, it is a divine skill. Kisaragi then thinks that he has underestimated Loki. On the other hand, Loki wonders if it is just his imagination or if he feels a slight sense of disrespect. Currently, Kisaragi and Loki arrive at the dungeon door, which connects to all dungeons and allows someone to freely come and go to any dungeon they wish to visit. For Kisaragi, no matter what dungeon he has to conquer or what monster he has to kill, if it is to break the curse on him, he would even kill a god. At present, at the goblin nest, Loki asks Kisaragi what they will do once they are inside the dungeon. Kisaragi replies that he wants to see how far he can go. At that moment, without warning, a low-level goblin suddenly appeared in front of them. In an instant, Kisaragi, who was at the same level with his mimicry skills, said he would start by testing his strength against them. In the blink of an eye, Kisaragi approached the monster and managed to defeat the goblin immediately. However, Loki asked why he was so satisfied. Besides, for Kisaragi, an opponent like that was hardly a challenge. Let me be happy at least, okay, said Kisaragi. According to him, it was the first time he had defeated a goblin alone. However, Loki said that he was at a higher level and of course, he would defeat them. 
If Kisaraga's level increased rapidly, it was because Loki gave him a large amount of mana particles. Thanks to that, he could defeat goblins that he couldn't previously defeat alone without breaking a sweat. Kisaragi thanked Loki and said he owed him one. However, according to Loki, it was a simple task for him. After that, he asked what they would do next. Kisaragi said that they would continue on because their goal was to reach the boss's room. At that time, as they headed to the goblin base, Loki said that this place was honestly very boring. Kisaragi then asked if he was expecting something different. Loki immediately replied that he certainly expected an exciting battle to get his blood pumping. But there wasn't a single monster there that could be considered an opponent for Kisaragi. For Loki, this was a serious problem. Suddenly, Loki told Kisaragi to look and according to him, the main force had decided to appear. However, according to Kisaragi, there were many enemies, so he asked if that meant the boss room was near. In the blink of an eye, Kisaragi suddenly attacked the monsters because he thought the first strike determined the victory. On the other hand, despite fighting many goblins, he could easily face them as he was doing now. Additionally, Kisaragi worried whether he could really fight them, but according to him, it was an easy journey. It was surprising that a large number of goblins suddenly approached to attack Kisaragi, but Kisaragi did not move. Instead, he used his powerful sword to defend himself. Loki was also surprised at that moment. Unexpectedly, Loki suddenly tried to stop Kisaragi, but he didn't listen because it was too late. As a result, there was a big explosion in the area. Before he could finish speaking, he suddenly felt something in his body that made him fall to the ground. After that, Loki called him a fool and said that was why he had asked him to stop. Additionally, he told Loki that he had called him a fool. According to Loki, it was the price to pay for using divine techniques with a weak human body, but Kisaragi was confused because it didn't happen when he used it before. Loki then said that it was because Kisaragi used heavenly authority at that time. Kisaragi then asked if he couldn't use Fenrir's skills without using heavenly authority. Loki said that was true, and that was why he had said his words now. He forbade the use of heavenly authority as well as all other skills copied from Fenrir. Kisaragi was shocked by Loki's statement, but according to Loki, it was a handicap so that Kisaragi would not rely too much on his advantages. Additionally, these advantages were called advantages because Kisaragi should save the best for last. Kisaragi then said that was why he couldn't stand trickster gods. A few hours later, Kisaragi and Loki arrived at the entrance of the fantastic goblin's lair. Nevertheless, the goblin king was the final boss of the goblin's den. His skill, called Minion Summoning, allowed him to summon an unlimited number of goblin minions. The ability to defeat this boss was considered a test to see if an awakened one had what it takes. All right, let's do this, Kisaragi said at the time. According to Loki, the leader seemed confident that he was just an ordinary goblin. However, Kisaragi wondered why he should be afraid but felt nothing at all. Suddenly, the leader used his ability to summon more goblins. However, according to Kisaragi, compared to Fenrir, it was nothing. He should have been able to handle it himself, but suddenly, Loki surprisingly used his ability on the goblin and commanded him to awaken the fire of wrath and rage. As a result, the goblin king and the goblins instantly went into a frenzy. Kisaragi asked what he had done, but Loki merely said it was supposed to be a test for him, or rather he told him to do his best. Kisaragi was surprised by Loki's words, then suddenly smiled and said he was a very cruel god. Without waiting any longer, the goblins approached to attack Kisaragi. In an instant, Kisaragi was also ready to attack them. On the other hand, according to Loki, if Kisaragi couldn't defeat these monsters without using heavenly authority skills, his prospects weren't even worth considering. 